One of my favorite videos to do here on my channel are my seasonal Dollar Tree blank videos, but I have never done one for everyday decor. So today that's what we're doing. I'm heading to Dollar Tree. I'm letting you know what is worth it, especially with their price increase. And then I'm going to share a ton of free files, a ton of ideas so that you can get a home that you love on a budget. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey & Wit. My name's Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. I also love to empower you to use power tools via wood builds and I also have a huge library of Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials. I'll link my full Cricut playlist down below. If you just recently got a Cricut for Christmas, this is a perfect video for you. The best thing about Dollar Tree supplies when you're starting out with Cricut is if you mess up, it's no big deal because they're super cheap. So blank number one is something that you would think of when it comes to crafts at Dollar Tree, but we're going to use it in a different way. So I grabbed one of these trays that have this little divider and I started by removing the little sticker on the back because I wanted to stain the sign. I used some dark walnut stain and covered the entire thing and let that dry. Then when it was dry, the biggest thing you wanna do when you're doing anything with your Cricut is measure and then measure again because you wanna make sure it's gonna fit your item when you cut it out. So here I'm getting a seven by seven square. So I'm gonna import my file and this is a free cut file over on my blog. I've got a full video too down in the description that'll show you how to download it. But then I'm just gonna put it in there, size it to seven inches, and then I'm gonna cut it out with the vinyl setting. If you're brand spanking new to Cricut and you need a little bit more help than this, video you can definitely check out my links down in the description i've got a full materials guide design space guide so you can check those out if you want a little bit more help then after i weeded out my white matte vinyl then i'm using my favorite expressions vinyl transfer tape i use this on painted surfaces and stained surfaces it's my most popular item that i've ever shared on my channel because i just love it so much I use it because it's gonna pick up your vinyl decal, but it's not gonna rip off all of that pretty stain that you just put on there. I absolutely love the saying, I'm trying to be more present in 2022 and try my best to stay off my phone. So this is a really pretty sign. This looks like something that you would pick up at a market or a boutique and it was under a couple bucks to make. Super quick and easy, especially with that free cut file. Now this next blank could absolutely work for that past project too if you can't find those and they are these little rectangle trays. I love these trays. I've done a ton of these seasonally so I wanted to do one for every day. I started off the same way by staining it and then I wanted to add just a little decal at the bottom so I could turn this into a photo frame. So I created this file as well and it says, let whatever you do today be enough. I feel like in a world where it's hustle culture and there's stuff going on all the time, I need a reminder on my craft desk that the work that I'm doing is enough. So I cut that four inches wide by two inches high, applied it, and then I just used some tape to add this picture of me when I got my plaque from YouTube to remind myself that I am working hard and not every day is going to be a crazy productive day but as long as you're working hard you are doing enough you are enough it is just a really good mantra for the year so you could put whatever saying you want on this whatever picture and it is quick and easy and cute Number three, I still think is worth it compared to other stores for $1.25 for these spatulas, especially because they turn out so adorable. You want to make sure you get a flat one like I showed and not the one with the groove in the center. So once I got it home, I made sure to measure just like I've been doing on everything else. And this cute little owl actually came from Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap when we went on our Boston trip. I just recently found it because I had misplaced it. So it's like Christmas. I'm excited to use it again. So I ended up cutting a little design that was two inches wide by three inches tall. And it says the dishes can wait, but life won't. I took some of my other Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape. This is my clear stuff. It's a little bit stickier than the paper, but it's still not gonna be as sticky as the Cricut, which I like. And I just applied it directly onto my spatula. I had a little issue with my end, so I fixed it. And then to make sure that it wouldn't come off on me, I just used a little bit of Mod Podge on top of it. Yes, it's permanent vinyl and I usually never seal it, but because I'm gonna have this out and the rubber tends to move, the Mod Podge will just help it stay in place. I finished it off with some jute twine just on the handle because it was a little blah before, and I absolutely love this. I'm gonna stick it in my utensil crock and it was super cheap, super cute. 
Spring has sprung at Dollar Tree, but the great news is about these buckets, you can find them pretty much year round in some sort of variation and they take vinyl super well. So again, we're gonna measure first and I decided that I needed about three and a half inches from the top, well, the bottom essentially of that jute wrap down to the bottom. I like to give myself a little bit of a buffer so then that way it doesn't look like it takes up the whole space. There's some breathing room around the outside. Now I decided to customize this with a last name. I used the font White Love and Market Saturday and Market Saturday is the word the and family, and then White Love is Smith. I just designed it in Design Space, cut it out, and then applied it to my bucket. This would be an awesome piece just for your house, just to put whatever you want in, a little faux greenery, etc. But how cute would this be for a housewarming gift or a neighbor gift? A ton of different options. Just put their name on it, throw whatever you want, goodies, plants in there, and it was only a buck twenty-five. When I did a trivet back in the fall, you guys loved it, and so I wanted to show another idea for an everyday one. I decided to go with the square one versus the round one this time, and it's a seven by seven square. Now for this one, I decided to cut out my design to be applied to the back. So I'm cutting it out on black matte adhesive vinyl, but I'm cutting it out backwards. To do that, all you have to do is move this little toggle in design space and it will flip it or mirror your image for you. And then you can apply it on the back, but when you're looking through the glass, it will be clear. So I designed this file because this is something my dad has said to my brother and I our whole life, good things happen to good people. And so I wanted to kind of memorialize it in a piece of decor for my house. You guys know me, I'm all about the sentimental value of things. So then I'm gonna apply my transfer tape just like usual. And then I'm gonna flip over my trivet and just apply this to the back. The goal here is so that when you flip it over and you use the trivet, you're not directly on the vinyl. And then for cleaning purposes, I decided to add some Mod Podge to the back just to make sure I could wipe it down if I need to because I plan to use this trivet. I love this. It is so cute and the trivets are a really good price, especially if you're just wanting to apply vinyl to them. I've also used their fabric ones with heat transfer vinyl, so I think these are still a great purchase at the $1.25 tree. This next one you guys are gonna love because you've been asking for it for a while. I went to the school section and grabbed one of these chalkboards so I could show you how to make a dupe of this tobacco basket that I get questions about all the time. So this file will be available over on my blog. I just cut it out on some white matte vinyl. I'm using black and white matte and I will link those down below so you can get them from the place that I do if you're interested. I'm doing my clear expressions vinyl transfer tape across the top and I ended up just sizing this file to seven inches tall. I think it's about four inches wide. I just didn't mess with the width. And then once it's applied, you could easily use this chalkboard as just a sign wherever you need some extra oomph or a message. It's also nice that it's on black versus like wood. But the great thing is once you have it, you could easily just take some hot glue to the back, glue it to the center of a tobacco basket from Walmart, Hobby Lobby, and you've got a dupe of mine. These chalkboard tags are absolutely a favorite in my house, especially with a little kid. It's so nice to label a ton of different things. They take vinyl really well. Now I decided to try the Crafter Square vinyl because you guys have been asking me what I think of it. I was only able to find the white and the removable, but we're just gonna try it anyway because it'd be nice to be able to remove it from these tags. So I went in with kind of an open mind, but I also thought like this is totally not gonna work for, cause I bought this one Dollar Tree was still a dollar. So $1 roll of vinyl. I didn't have high hopes for it. When I first put it out here, it was rolled and bumpy. I ended up using my squeegee to kind of push it out. And usually when vinyl bubbles off the carrier sheet like that, that's my first indication that it's not that great, but I pressed on. So I put it onto my mat and the internet told me that I needed to do it on the washi setting. So you can just type in washi and it will kind of populate for you and you can select that. That seemed to cut it well. I didn't have anything pop up or do anything funky. And I'm also using a pretty much brand spanking new mat. So you wanna make sure your mat is super sticky so it doesn't move around on you when you cut it. Then when I went to weed it, it wasn't like an easy peel weed. As you see here, I have to use my little hook tool to make sure things don't get picked up. All things considered, I really do think that this performed better than I thought it was going to, because like I said, I was not going in with a super open mind. 
Once everything was weeded, I was able to take my paper transfer tape and apply the words to my little tags for fin stuff. And honestly, the only thing I had to do was use my little squeegee to hold down the letters because A, it's removable, so it's not super sticky, but like the removable is really not that sticky. But once I got it on there, it seemed to stay. So, I mean, the jury's still out to see if it lasts, but I mean, for labels like this or quick projects, I would buy it again. I will definitely have to keep an eye out for the white permanent to see what that is like compared to the other ones, but these turned out pretty well. I was able to put these tags on Finn's toys and they look really high end, especially with these baskets from Target. You would not guess that they are little tags from Dollar Tree. So these are some of my favorite things to grab and I didn't hate the vinyl. <laughs> We're headed back to the crafter square section for this next one and we are going to grab some more of those little trays this time i'm using three of them and i'm going to use some wood glue to glue the sides together for christmas time i made a nativity sign with two of these glued together and i thought three of them together would make a really decent sized sign pretty substantial so i went through with the wood glue and clamps and i clamped them for about 15 minutes and then I did the other side. Once my sign was done and the clamps were off, it will sit up on its own, both vertically and horizontally. So you can do a tall skinny sign or like I'm gonna do the wider sign. So again, I went and grabbed my stain and went downstairs in the basement because it's freezing here in Illinois. I was not about to go outside to do this, but I wanted to make sure I could get some ventilation. And then I let it dry and measure the width of the sign. Now I'm looking at 14 inches here and that's key because I have a design file that has the little wings on a letter. So I wanna make sure it's gonna stretch from end to end. So I'm cutting this out 14 inches wide and I'm then gonna weed it out. And as you can see here, the E and the H have the little kind of tails on them. So I'm using my paper transfer tape and I'm gonna apply it to the sign. And it's really nice because the sign is 14 inches wide. So I can just take the two little ends and line it up. And I had a little faux pas with the U. It happens to everyone. I just, you know, sometimes you have to do some operation on your vinyl, but it turns out just fine. So once everything was applied and I gave some resuscitation to my U, my sign was ready to go. This you would not think is a Dollar Tree sign. And under five bucks, I think this is a great size. And I also like that it is lightweight so that if it falls over, it's no big deal. This next one is something you can usually always find at every Dollar Tree, and that is a book section. For this one, I found four of the same hardcover books, which is going to allow me to make a book stack for our family, because there's four of us, if you include my dog, Sebastian. This is not a pregnancy announcement if anyone's keeping track. So you're going to want to take the sleeves off your books and then paint the entire outside as well as the edges especially because these are blue. If you're lucky enough to find white ones, you can just leave it, but I painted it all white. Then I stacked them up and grabbed some ribbon that I'm gonna use to hook them together. And I also cut out all of our names to the height of one inch. I'm using my paper transfer tape again because we're applying on to painted surfaces. And then I just peeled them back and applied all of the names onto the books, making sure that they were justified to the left. Then I'm taking my ribbon, which I got from Hobby Lobby, just applying some hot glue around the outside, and then also some jute twine to keep it together. I've seen people glue the individual books together. I don't think you need that unless you're gonna be like swinging the book stack around, which I don't plan on doing. So this is a super easy project, especially if you can see the listings online for how much these go for. This was a $5 DIY and the books are still cheaper at Dollar Tree than my Goodwill, which are $1.99. Now, what if you like these signs, but you don't want the overall wood stain look, you want more of a paint look? Well, I've got you. We're gonna take those square signs that we used before, do three of them and hook them together with wood glue, just like I did the sign before. Once all three of them are together, I'm gonna to stain, but just the front of it. So then that is gonna be what our letters look like. I did the same measuring and cutting process as I did before with a different saying. So this is the same one that was on the picture frame from before, let whatever you do today be enough. I cut it out in some vinyl, made sure to weed the entire thing. And then I'm gonna apply it to my sign just like a decal. 
but instead of stopping there, I'm gonna go over the top of my letters with some Mod Podge, just a light coat to seal them down. Once your Mod Podge is dry, then you can go over it with two coats of some white chalk paint. Now I am just going directly over the top of the letters with a paintbrush, but I'm doing it gently. If you're worried about getting it under the letters, you can use a makeup sponge and dab the paint on instead of painting it on. I'm also making sure all of the edges are covered. And then once everything is done, I wait until it's like 50 to 60% dry. Then I'm removing the vinyl to reveal the letters in a really pretty stained color. Now I wouldn't recommend this process if you've got a huge decal or something that has a lot of little letters in it because it's going to take you forever to weed, but this one was pretty quick. I love the saying and I love that it is more white to go against all the wood tones in my house. Number 11 are these Crafter Square canvases and they have two different kinds and these are my favorite. I make sure to get the ones that have a thicker side, that way you know that there's wood inside so that you can stain the wood and have it be your frame. So I grabbed an 8x10 as well as a 5x7 and I started by using a flathead screwdriver to remove the staples on the back. You use the flathead screwdriver to kind of pop them up and then grab pliers or something to pull them off completely. Be careful while you're doing this not to hurt yourself. Then I'm staining the outside of both of them. And while the stain's drying, I used heat transfer vinyl to cut out two different designs. If you have not used heat transfer vinyl before, I recommend this Cricut materials guide video that I will link for you down below. It'll talk about the different types of vinyl, when to use them, and also how to cut them differently on your machine. It's a great breakdown, so be sure to check that out. As a reminder for folks that have used Cricut in the past as well, make sure to mirror your design for heat transfer vinyl because you apply it backwards, similar to how we did on the trivet. So once those are all weeded out, then I'm taking my scissors and I'm trimming off the edges of my canvas piece that I took off originally. And I'm gonna use my heat press. I did 340 here and it was a little too hot, so I suggest 325. And then I just applied it with some firm pressure and I did the same thing for this fresh soap and water hand towels. Now the C was a design I found on Canva, so I just downloaded that. And then this fresh soap and water actually came from Design Bundles. I am loving their stuff. I used a bunch for Christmas and I have found out that they've quickly become one of my favorite sites for files. So I will link that down below if you're interested in this file. And then I just took some hot glue on that frame, put it onto the canvas and then trimmed off any excess. So it's pretty easy. You're just gonna take off the canvas, put on a design, stain your frame or paint it and then reattach. So pretty simple, but these look really high end. This is gonna look really nice in my bathroom. I love the mixture of the canvas as well as the wood. Now these flower sack towels are a relatively new find for me and I use them in the fall to make some fun hand towels for my bathroom. And so I had two different projects in mind for those. The first one is going to be a pillow using this good things happen to good people design. I just edited it just a little bit so the outside wasn't a circle, it's more of a hexagon. And then I unfolded my flower sack towel to the point where it was folded in quarters. So in half and then in half again to get one square. I pressed out the creases and the different wrinkles in there from it being folded at the store. And then I took my design, which is 11 inches wide, and put it onto my pillow and centered it. So this is gonna be the front of your pillow. Now the reason that I am pressing before I make the pillow is because I'm gonna make my pillow with hot glue. And if you use hot glue first, then you put the heat on it, it is gonna reheat the glue and not work well for you. So I'm applying this first, and then I'm gonna add hot glue around the bottom and the top. And I left one of the folds on the side, so then I don't have to worry about gluing that. I'm just gluing the top and the bottom together. And then for the bottom, I had to do a little bit more glue because that's where all the openings are. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you glue down essentially three times, so the middle and then the top and the bottom flap, because if not, it's open and you're gonna have openings for your pillow. So once everything is glued down on either side, then I went through and just made a little slot on the one side so that I could stuff it. 
Once it's stuffed, I just added some glue to the side and this pillow was done. What I really like about this too is I usually use Dollar Tree placemats for projects like this, but they're hard to find for everyday decor. I love the crisp clean look of this white and this basket along with this blanket that I got from Five Below recently. So it's a $5 blanket, a $125 pillow. The one behind it was DIY as well. So super affordable and really cute. So we're not done with those flower sack towels just yet. I've got another idea for those for number 13. So for this one, I'm going to measure what it is to fold it in thirds and that gave me about seven inches wide. And I decided to screen print these for longevity. So I've got a full video on screen printing, how to make your screens, the whole process, all the way through to how to clean your screens on my channel. I will link that down below. It's a pretty quick video, it's under 10 minutes, so you'll wanna check that out if you're interested in screen printing. I've got all the links to everything over there as well, of the products I use on Amazon. But here I'm just making my screen and I'm gonna make some Schitt's Creek towels. So the first one is Moira that says you just fold it in and this is from the scene where they're cooking dinner for the party and she <laughs> essentially says that her and David are gonna do all of the food and they're talking about how to fold in cheese. So I thought this was cute and minimalistic. I designed this and I've got this as well as the David towel available over on my blog so be sure to head over there if you are a Schitt's Creek fan. So I am just pressing this on with something underneath it, just using some light speedball ink press fabric ink. And I'm doing the same thing for my David one that says, what does the fold in the cheese even mean? And then once those dry overnight, it's a really simple process to permanently set it. You're just gonna take a heat source at 340 and put heat on it for 60 seconds. These are so easy to make and why I do the screen print versus a heat transfer vinyl on it is pretty simple. The heat transfer vinyl I found when you're using hand towels and you're drying them and they're getting wet tends to crack or crinkle. With these, the ink is in the fibers of the towel. So if you're drying your hands, I've had ones that I made last year that I've washed a ton of times and it still looks nice and bright. So for longevity, I say do the screen print. Another thing I absolutely love to screen print from Dollar Tree are these t-shirts. I found that the stores by me are getting more and more t-shirts, especially in more sizes. It used to be just kids and then like extra small t-shirts, which aren't gonna work for me. So I found a pack of crafting designs on design bundles. I weeded this out, same thing, followed the exact process that I share over on my screen printing video. I used some white screen printing ink. let it dry overnight, and then I set it with the heat, same thing, 340 for 60 seconds. This thing is going to be permanent. You would definitely pay probably $25 for this at a specialty store, and I made it myself for just a couple bucks. The shirt was $1.25. I love this, and I think I'm also gonna add whiskey and wit to the back, so it's kind of personalized merch. Now these last two items are in the Dollar Tree glassware section and some of the items are worth it, some of them are not. These are the ones that I think are definitely worth it. One being these glass plates for etching. I absolutely love them. I grabbed a large one, so a dinner plate as well as a small appetizer plate and I started by measuring them. So the smaller one is about five inches in diameter and the larger one is about seven inches in diameter. So I'm gonna use that to create my designs on Design Space. So for the smaller plate, I'm using a peony file I got at Kluya Designs. I will link down below so you can get that if you want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a circle to design space and make it four inches wide. That is so it fits within the five inch diameter of that plate. And I'm adding this little peony file from Kluya Designs. So this SVG file is actually in two different colors. And as you can see on the right, it's a ton of different pieces. So I'm just gonna select them all and go down to the bottom and hit weld so it's all one piece. You can also do attach, but because I'm gonna then slice, I want them welded so it's one piece. Then I'm gonna select both and hit slice at the bottom. And that is going to create a circular stencil for me. That's gonna make it a lot easier to weed. So then we're gonna do the same thing with the larger plate. I found these on Etsy for folding the cheese, another Schitt's Creek reference. I love this file and it cut pretty well of Moira and David. And so because it was a seven inch plate, I did my circle six and a half inches. And then I took my two items from this pack to fit it within the circle. 
Once I did that, I selected the picture and the text and welded those together. And then I selected the circle and the welded piece and hit slice to create my stencil. So honestly, I think the hardest part is creating the stencil and it's not even that bad because this process is so simple. So you're gonna go through and weed it like a stencil instead of a decal. And basically what that means is you're seeing here is I'm weeding out the inside. So you wanna weed out anywhere that you want the design to show up and the etching cream to show. Now the great thing about etching is it's permanent in the glass so you can put it right on the plate and then use it, it will be food safe, dishwasher safe, all the fun stuff. When your design is on there, you're gonna take this product called Armor Etch. You can get it at any craft store or online. I've etched a ton of different things. And you're just gonna take a regular paintbrush and paint it on there. You wanna make sure that you have a decent coat across the top and don't worry if you put a ton on there, you would rather have more than less and you can always scrape off the excess and put it back in your container when you're done, which is nice so you can reuse it for your next project. Once it's all covered, I let it sit for about 10 minutes. I wouldn't leave it any more than 15 minutes. Let's put it that way. Once that's done, I'm running it under some hot water to remove the initial etching cream. And then I'm going to peel off my stencil and clean it with some soap and water. Make sure to dry it before you worry that you didn't get any etching on there because when it's wet, it, you can't see it as well. But then once it's done, your etching is on there. It is in the plate, like I said, and you can put these in the dishwasher. You can definitely not have to be super gentle with them. They have a lot more longevity than vinyl. And like I said, food safe, you can put food right on it once they're clean. And the other items that I think are totally worth it in the Dollar Tree glassware section are their rocks glasses, as well as their wine glasses, their stemless ones. And I love these because they make awesome gifts that you can throw together really quickly. So for my glasses, I am measuring first, just like I have with everything else. And then for my stencils for my cups, I'm doing the same thing really that I did with the plates. I'm just taking a two inch square as well as some logos from some Chicago sports teams. I'm gonna do a four piece cup set here. So I'm gonna do the Cubs, the Blackhawks, the Bulls and the Bears, or technically a house divided, but I'm a Cubs fan. So I chose that versus the White Sox. Apply them to your glasses on one side. And if you need to, you can add some painter's tape if you're worried about the stencil being too close to kind of the opening where you're putting the etching cream. But then once that's applied, let it sit the 10 minutes, wash them off, and you've got some really awesome cups that you could customize. These are great for groomsmen gifts. They're great for housewarming gifts. We ended up taking cups like this and putting monograms on them for the groomsmen at our wedding. It worked out super well. And for $5 for the four glasses, these look really high end and you wouldn't guess they came from Dollar Tree. The wine glasses also make a great engagement gift, housewarming gift. I ended up just designing a really simple A plus W heart to put on these for Alex and Whitney. If somebody got married or engaged, this is a great gift that you could package up with a bottle of wine, maybe add their engagement date. And no one would guess that you only paid a couple bucks for the items because you add so much additional sweat equity when you put the work in to customize them for a gift. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to go down to the comments and let me know your favorite project. And also if you would like more Cricut Dollar Tree inspiration, I've got a full playlist with items for Christmas, fall, Easter, patriotic. I also have a full one for teacher gifts. So different blanks you can pick up and do for back to school or teacher gifts. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Whip video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.